Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with another tutorial for you guys. This is kind of an extension of the last one that I shared on my channel. We're going to be doing the same sort of technique, but to create some different items. So we're going to be making some different types of envelopes and pockets and pouches that you can use in your journals. You can also just do this and create patterned paper and anything else you want. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is take some plain paper. And today, instead of using paper scraps, we're going to use little bits of book pages, any kind of old book page sort of papers that you might have lying around from your crafting. We're going to use a bunch of those up. And essentially, we're going to be collaging over the entire page. So I've got a white A4 piece of paper here, and I'm just going to begin collaging little pieces of paper all over the page overlapping them all different sizes and all different shapes so this time instead of cutting the paper scraps into rectangle like little rectangles with my paper trimmer i'm just using a ruler to tear them down or i'm just using my hand and tearing them down into more random shapes and as you can see here i'm just gluing them down with my wet pba glue and just slowly overlapping until the entire page is filled So once I filled this first page up with papers, I'm going to set that aside to dry for a little while. We will come back to that and add the tissue paper technique over the top, but I thought I'd take a larger piece of paper as well. So this is A3 and we're going to do the same sort of technique. So again, I'm taking lots of different little pieces of book pages and I'm just collaging all over the paper until it's full. You can see on this piece of paper, I also included some music page sheets I use some workbook sheets and a little image from the front of a pattern envelope, like a sewing pattern. So this one's got a little bit more color in it than the last one. You can do whatever you like. You can just do text. You could do all music paper or all images, whatever you want to do. Once that page was complete, again, I just put that aside to dry for a little while. And then I'm going to do just one more page. So again, an A4 sheet of white paper. And this time I'm going to skip straight to the tissue paper and we're not going to do anything underneath. So I'm just applying glue all over the page and then I've got the tissue paper. So this is from a sewing pattern and I'm just pressing that all over the paper and I don't mind that it's got those little wrinkles in it. I think it adds to the texture. If you get any little rips or holes, you can always just layer up more tissue paper over the top. So I did that and I did it in a few areas just so that it looked nice and even. And you can see the more that you layer it up, the color gets deeper and you get some nice variations in the paper. So once I was happy with that, I just put that aside to dry and then I came back to the other ones that we created before and I decided to do a few little patches of tissue paper on this piece. So instead of covering over the entire page, I just do little sections and I like how it looks because it gives some areas of the paper that really vintage yellowy tone but then you've also got the other sort of hues of yellow and those paper sort of colors coming through in the rest of the pattern so i just did this in a few areas around the page just to give it a bit of interest and it just looks really cool because it's transparent paper so you can still see underneath but it just adds that really nice overlay over the top so setting that one aside again, and then I took the first one we created with the A4 paper, and this time I just put the glue all over, and then I pressed the tissue paper down on top. So I was able to get this sheet really nice and flat, so there's not really any wrinkles in it. Again, just to give me a bit of variety in the finished pieces. And then I just flipped that page over, and I trimmed off all the excess tissue paper. You could fold it over and glue it over if you like. So with the larger piece, I just folded over those few little bits that were overhanging and just glued them down with a little bit of glue. And then with the last sheet we created, which was just the tissue paper, I'm just carefully taking my scissors and I'm just trimming off all of the excess tissue paper all around the page. 
Then I put those aside and I let them dry completely and here they are all dry. And we are going to now use this pretty much just as a piece of patterned paper. And we're going to create a bunch of different little envelopes and things that we can use in our journals. So I'm taking that first page that we created and I just cut this down in half to give me two pieces. I'm going to create a different type of pocket with each piece. So with this first half, I'm just folding up the bottom and then leaving a little bit of room up the top for a flap and then folding that down over the rest of the paper to create a little envelope shape. As you can see here, you can use a bone folder to get these creases nice and neat and nice and folded. And just to give the inside, the inside of that flap a little bit of pattern so that it kind of matches the aesthetic of the outside, I'm just taking some book page and I'm gluing it down just on that top section of the envelope, which you're going to be able to see once it's closed. Once we've sealed it up, when we're opening the envelope, I just want that to look like a book page instead of that stark white paper. So I'm just trimming around the excess again. And then I did have obviously a much too large piece of book page. So I just tore off the excess there. And it doesn't matter that the bottom is white because you're not going to see it once we close or seal our envelope together. So that's going to be the first one. It's not sealed yet. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. And I'm taking that other half of the paper. This time I'm just going to create a really simple little pocket. So I just folded it sort of almost in half. So we have that little bit of a excess on the back there. And then I'm just using my trimmer to neaten up the edges. And then again, I just want to cover up that stark white paper. So this time I'm just taking some washi tape. I'm just sticking that straight down on that little bit that's going to hang out. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess on the side there. And there you can see, you can't see that stark white anymore. And again, I haven't sealed this up yet. We're going to do that last. So I'm just going to put that aside and we're going to take the next piece, which is the tissue paper piece. And I'm just folding this up to give me a basic sort of pocket shape. So this time I wanted the flap to be a little bit bigger, but I am still going to trim this in half. I just thought I would fold it at the same time to sort of save me a step. So after I folded it, I just trimmed it in half and that's going to give me two pockets. My trimmer didn't go through this too well, so I just went in with my scissors to finish cutting. And then for one of these, I decided to round off the corners of the little flap of the envelope or the pocket, just to give it a bit of a different look. And then for the other one, I could have just left it, but I decided to just trim at an angle so that the flap has a little bit more of a design to it. I haven't covered the inside or lined the inside of those yet. I'm taking the larger piece first. And again, I'm going to fold this and then cut it in half. So I'm folding it the same way, just with enough room to fold down a flap over the top. These two are gonna be nice and big because I use that really big A3 paper. And then I'm going to, again, put this in my paper trimmer and just cut it in half. You don't have to cut it in half. You could cut one wider than the other and have a nice narrow pocket where you can make multiple different pockets, it's completely up to you. So just giving you a quick look and just like I did before, I'm going to take my glue stick and some little scraps of paper or washi tape. I'm going to cover up those white pieces of paper which are showing on the back side of the flap. So again, just taking my glue stick and just gluing down those scraps of paper over the top and you don't have to cover the entire thing just that little top section that you're going to be able to see when you open up the envelope or the pocket. So once you've glued it down, you just wanna refold and then that's all ready to go so we can seal that up. And here you see me just repeating the same process for the rest of the envelopes. I just use some more washi tape on these larger envelopes and that's a really, really quick way to line the inside. So here you can see I've sealed my envelopes up with a sewing machine. I just stitched around the edges of them, just showing you how I've done that. They're a little bit different on each one. You definitely don't have to use a sewing machine if you don't want to, or if you don't have one, you can always just use glue or double-sided tape or even a stapler would work as well. So you can seal it up however you like. For some of these, I stitched the entire way around, even around the flap. 
just to give it a nice sort of interesting look. And for some of the others, I just sewed down the edges. It's just nice to have a little bit of variety and try some different styles to work out which one you like the best. And there is the little tuck pocket as well, which was so fast to make, but turned out really, really cute. Nice little pocket for your journal. And then there's just a few little steps that I want to include in the end. These are completely optional. I'm just showing some additional ideas if you would like to add anything else. So for this first envelope, I'm just pressing an eyelet through the flap and then I can just tie some string or some twine through there and sort of wrap it around the envelope to keep it closed. I think that just looks really pretty and adds some nice textures to the envelope. For this other large envelope, I decided to put it through an embossing folder. It didn't fit quite in the embossing folder, it was a little bit larger, but because of the pattern that I used, it worked out just fine. Just pressed some little floral patterns into the envelope, which just again adds a really beautiful texture and just makes the whole thing look even more interesting. And then for this little envelope style, I just wanted to show you that you can always work with your stamps and add more layers on top of these. So I think a black ink would look really, really good. I, for some reason, only have green ink at the moment, so I did green, but this looks really cool. And a black ink would kind of blend into the book pages and the sewing paper even better. But those are just some additional ideas if you want to take it to the next level. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm really loving this tissue paper technique, so I want to share this quick little idea with you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're all doing really well and I'll see you in my next video.